Welcome, everybody, to the Selena MMA Podcast. I am excited, as your host, Steve Cheese, to be joined today with Montana De La Rosa, ahead of her big fight on uh, February 25th, excuse me, with Tatiana Suarez. Montana, thank you so much. We were talking off air. You know, obviously, this week has been a crazy week in Texas with with the ice and, and all that, and we're so close to your fight, so we're just thankful you're able to give us a few minutes to to talk about it. How are you today? Absolutely. Of course. I'm great today. You know, uh, yeah, this week was definitely a weird one, but it was actually nice. I got just got like a lot of one-on-one time with like coaches and really just got to, like dig into like fight stuff too. just kind of like watch a lot of film. And yeah, I feel like it was, it was really good for me. Awesome. And that film uh, and that film review is something we're definitely interested in and we will get to that, but we want to start. We're about 20 days out, right? Um, give us an idea where you're at in your prep, how you're feeling, how how you think this uh, this process leading up to February 25th is going for you. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's going great. I've known about this fight for a long time now, like since November or so. So I've just, it's just been every day, you know, grinding, just getting ready for one person, which is stressful sometimes, but um, it's all going to pay off for sure. I'm really excited to be her first fight back since everyone thinks like she's like undefeated and she's obviously a very talented fighter and I'm just really excited to test myself against her. Yeah, and and actually we were going to talk about that later but since you brought it up, you know, you know, you do get a fighter off of off of a significant amount of rest and and it was, you know, obviously, you know, there were some injuries in there, fairly significant injuries in in there as well. How does how has that changed your camp as far as your approach going into this fight, you know, with somebody who might be experiencing a little bit of octagon rust? I mean, I'm just taking it as her last fight was last month. Like, I'm trying to prepare for her absolute best. Um, you know, I'm not sure how she's going to react having her kind of her knee messed up. Like, you don't know if she gets kicked and she's like, oh, is that going to be okay? Or... If she takes a shot and she's like, oh, my neck, because I, like, I know her injuries because she's put them out there so much. So, I mean, I have injuries, too. I just don't put them out there like that. <laughs> but, like, it, it is different, like, knowing exactly what's hurt on her. But I know she's such a tough person that I don't think it would it would really get to her head. Like, I know she's, like, a cancer survivor, and she's been through a lot. So I'm just taking her, like, she's going to be her absolute best coming in there to fight me. But you never know. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that was I was going to sum it up. You are planning on her being at her absolute best and and nothing else, and and that's where your head is at right yeah, now. Exactly. Yeah. So so we're probably not into any weight cut yet, but uh, you know how are we feeling about it? Any weight cut needs? How how are weight cuts normally for you? When will you know if it's like oh no, this is this is a good one or a bad one or whatever? How will you know in that process if it's if it's going to be good for you? Um, always fight week, like seeing how much I come in at, seeing if there's any other factors, like for women, of course, you always got to make sure you're not on the cycle or whatever, because that could mean you could hold on to a couple pounds. Um, usually my weight's pretty good though. I've only had like one bad weight cut where I just like waited too long to cut. And then, um, every time I got up, I would just like pass out. <laughs> I think. Ugh. Uh, <laughs> I would just get yeah. the elevator, pass out. And like, I wasn't like cutting like a whole bunch of weight. I just had waited too long and then I couldn't like get my body used to it. But yeah, usually I stay, I like to stay like 15 pounds within the weight class and then <clears throat> try and get like 10 pounds, maybe like a week or two before, and then just cut the rest of water. Man, I can see, I can tell you've done this before because you are all over some of the things that, that we were going to talk about. You know, a lot of people do say, you know, as long as I'm in this range with a few days to go, I, I, I feel yeah. pretty comfortable. Yeah. So you're, you're able to kind of gauge that as you get closer. So that way I'd imagine it probably takes a little bit of a mental toll on you too, right? Where you're like, if you have to stress about that versus maybe focusing on the task at hand. Um, you know, I'm sure it can affect you. Yeah. And it's, it's nice. Cause we've worked, me and my husband, we've worked with like multiple companies that like will cook meals for us and everything like fight week. And now we've just been doing this for so long that he can just do it for me. Basically. Like we have the system down and we can just like do all the cooking that we need. And, Cause usually if I would have to cook for myself, I would give me like a plate that's 
way too much or too many carbs or whatever. So if, if he sets it in front of me, I'm like, okay, this is what I need to eat and don't go to the snack cabinet. <laughs> I, I, we appreciate you speaking on behalf of all the folks out there that, that do make themselves a, a healthy portion size. So uh, we understand that battle every day. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> so it's funny, you know, from a timeliness standpoint, we've received some news over the last 24 hours about about the tough series and some pretty excited news, exciting news about, you know, the coaches. You came through the tough series. Uh, you know, talk about what what that meant to you and, and how you think it's positively shaped your career. You know, do you think it put you in a better space um, as you got into to the real UFC life and uh, what that looked like? Absolutely. I think it was a little different for me because they were just starting out the 125 division and whoever won that show was going to be, was going to be the champion. So just going in there, I didn't have like many hopes. Like I wasn't like this undefeated, like amazing fighter that like thought I was going to win the show, but I thought I would, I would do pretty well and just see where I was at and see if I wanted to continue on this path, like being a young fighter and just like being around all the girls, seeing their mentality, seeing how they trained, like Every day I would get more confident because um, I would feel like I actually belonged. Like before that, I was like, oh, I'm not that, like I would have so many doubts in my head. And I think that just like reassured me being around like some of the top fighters in my division that like I really belong. And this is, this is what I need to be doing. And just like seeing how they, how their mentality was and how they trained. I was like, I can do this. Like this can be like my career. What was there like one specific thing? Like we talk about the talent level, even even in that space, because you talked about the circumstances. Um, but even as you get into the UFC, is there is there one thing from that from those days that you were like, I really took this away? As this was the difference between success and and not success. Um. Yeah, I mean, probably just mentality. Just like, because I mean, being in a house, it was it's hard to keep your emotions and your feelings to yourself. Like all the girls would be kind of open and like talk about how they're feeling for their fight and stuff. So if some, if one of the girls like a, a little over overconfident, but like you can tell that they're like not that confident, you're like, okay, like, I don't, I don't know. Like you might lose this fight. Just like seeing it that way. Awesome. And, and, you know, as a fan, you know, Conler, Connor versus Chandler, like, are, are you a fan? And, and, you know, do you still watch it because of your time there? Is, do, you, do you, are you enjoying and looking forward to this, uh, this tough series? Oh yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Like you have to look forward to it with Connor McGregor. Like, I think that's going to be a great fight actually. Just two like wild fight. Chandler's wild for sure. He's going to make the fight. Yeah. And you never know how McGregor's going to look. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey. hey. However he's going to look, he's going to look interesting. Yeah. I know that. That's He's going to keep your eyes on the TV for sure. doesn't matter how the fight goes. Like, the show fun for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, you've talked a lot about it already. We talk about mental prep. That's really what, you know, Selena MMA about it, is about, you know, and that mental readiness piece. So many people talk about physical traits when they're looking at fighters. Oh, this person has great cardio or power. You know, talk about what you do to get yourself in that uh, that right mental space, space and what type of things you do to work on your mental prep. So that way, anything that that occurs within an octagon, you, you feel like you you're in the, the correct uh, space. Yeah, um, I like to do like a lot of meditating and just like anything that like clears my mind, I feel like, because if I let negative emotions, and negative thoughts come in, they just kind of overpower me. So I like to like ice bath or just do anything that I can just completely shut my mind off because I feel like that's when I'm the best when I fight is when I can just like block everything off, not, not think about anything outside the octagon, not let anything, any thoughts come into my mind. Yeah. Very binary zeros and ones. I got to win or win or lose here. No, no difference. Just let the, um, really. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, so similar to the mental prep, we talk about the headspace. Um, HQ, the human quotient, is something that we quantify. You know, you talk about someone's EQ or IQ. This is really the HQ is, is the quantification of, of someone's mental readiness. Um, can you tell when you're, um, you know, going into a fight, maybe fight day or, or leading into it, 
you you are you are or are not in the right headspace and yeah and and what do you feel like that is absolutely um it's it's, it's hard to pinpoint but like some some days <clears throat> you just wake up and you're just like gosh like i just want this to be over with like that's all you can think of like i just i just want to get my money and i want this to be over with like i don't even want to think about the fight but then sometimes I wake up on fight day and I'm like, ooh, like I'm feeling good. Like, <laughs> like that's so much of a mental. Well, I mean, it, it's obviously a mental thing, but I, I'm sure there's a way you can like switch that to one or the other. But like when you start thinking a certain way, you can just go down that rabbit hole unless you clear your mind and switch it. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, you talk about fight day and those final moments. You know, there's so much between you know what your mind my or headspace is during your camp um then you sort of have those final days of the weigh in and the weight cut um and and then you get to fight day and you have those final moments to yourself before you come out in front of the crowd and and regardless of what type of person you are in front of the crowd it's it's kind of that energy dump you're kind of now all of a sudden like kind of taking it in but you when you get those final moments to yourself and back in the locker room are you are you a person of prayer are you a person of like all right no i need to get hype or or let me go over my notes one more time. What what are those final moments like before you come out in front of the thousands of fans to know that you're all right, I'm I'm here, I'm ready to go. Kind of just like turn on some music, have my coaches like tell me positive things. Um just kind of like pace and try to sh <clears throat> shut off the mind. Um just things like that help. Just like keep moving, hitting mitts, um and just block the negative thoughts <laughs> yeah staying loose keeping all that bad energy uh keeping it out during during all that movement breath. yeah so like deep breaths in and out holding holding your breath for a little bit things like that of course yeah 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 um you know our modeling throughout this as, as we sort of run statistics in, in advance to your fight has picked up a change in your preparation and your your camp throughout this fight do you, have you noticed a change that, you know, what do you think maybe is the change that, that, that maybe the AI is picking up on? Do you think that there has been something different about this camp that you've been like, yeah, like, I, I, you know, I'm feeling really good about, you know, some of the things that I'm doing this time. Well, at the last three fights or so, I usually go to Colorado and like train with the big camp there, but I've been doing my whole camp, like where I started at in Fort Worth, um, at Genesis MMA. Um, yeah, just, I guess just having people around me that like really care about me and that I see every day that like know my style. Um, I think that's been helping me a lot and just having the team around me like winning as well. It, it brings a lot of good energy into the team. Like we're eight no this year with like, I mean, we have amateur, we have a lot of amateur fighters too, amateur and pro. So, uh, yeah, that just brings a lot of good energy to the team and to training. So, so that, that is motivation, not, not pressure at all. Like, oh, oh we're eight. No, I don't want to, or, or it's like, man, I'm feeling the, the good vibes. That's yeah. it. So you, you take that as an absolute win. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and obviously you're, you're, you're training with, with the husband and, and, you know, helping you through that. How, you know, how is it having him around all hours of the day as coach and husband, you know, you, you, how often do we, do we get tired of each other or is, or, or is really that, that relationship within the trainer space is, is, is he really is taking your game to the next level? Yeah. I mean, he really is. Obviously we have our days, like we're life, we're going to argue over things, but I just try to set that all aside when we go to the gym. That way I can just like focus on him being my trainer and that I know he's, he wants the best for me, like no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, uh, I, I don't know how I deal with anyone uh, 24 hours around me, <laughs> 24 hours a day around me, but uh, he in this, of, in this... Yeah, he coaches a lot of other people and he, he does his class stuff. So we obviously get our space like <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I do my own thing. So I think we get good, good, good. Other two. Yeah. So we've talked about it. You get Tatiana Suarez. Um, you know, let's just start with your overall thoughts, you know, from a 20,000 foot view, you know, like you talked about some hype and all that. What, what's the first thing that stood out to you when you started to review tape? Like, like this is the thing that I need to be most prepared for. 
most prepared for is probably just her relentlessness with her takedowns. Like, she might throw, like, the same things a lot, which is actually good for me because I can figure out, like, the counters for those. And that's what I can work on, like, a lot throughout camp. But, yeah, she's, like, it doesn't matter if you stuff one. Like, she's going to keep coming over and over again with her takedowns because, you know, that's where she wants to be. She wants to be on top, like, throwing ground and pound. Yeah, Look, you are no shy of of some elite level grappling yourself and 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 giving getting some submissions. You know, when you have a situation where where both fighters have a, a, an elite level on the ground, does that ever change your mind about you know maybe we stay on the feet and strike it out, or are you just you just like no, this is a great opportunity to to show what kind of grappler and what type of skills that you have, uh, and stop making everybody you know talk about what what she is. I mean, the perfect fight for me would be, like, like staying on the feet, obviously, like, keeping her away, th like, touching and moving, but fights are never perfect, and I know she's, she's obviously, she's going to be coming in with, like, so much force, um, it's, you can't, like, stay away from the takedown, so I just got to be prepared for everything. Yeah. And and so for all of your fans on fight night, you know, kind of we'll, we'll play a complete the sentence, I guess. But, uh, you know, if Montana is able to do this, she will get her arm raised and be victorious. What do you think that biggest thing is your advantage to, to get the W? Um, I would say uh, bringing her into deep waters. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you think from a cardio standpoint, you're you're going to be super, super comfortable. And, you know, you, you even talked about in the beginning, she is very active and, and wants to put that pressure on you. Sometimes when that pressure doesn't work, you know, for the first round, round and a half, and that person gets into deep waters, uh, it, you see a different person at that point, right? Yeah, exactly. And I think she's yeah. kind of taking this, uh, this fight lightly because it's her first fight back and she just, she wanted to go up to 125. So I, I feel like she's just like testing herself out. So I'm not sure how I feel like she's taking it lightly, I guess. How, how, how does that make you feel, Montana? You know, do you think that like, is that, has that been a little bit of bullet bulletin board material for you a little bit or, or you just, eh, who cares what people say? I'm just still focused on the task at hand. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just so focused on February 25th. So February 25th is the focus. It's, it's obviously everything in front of you, but win or lose, you've been a mainstay, you know, in, in this division and in the UFC for, you know, five, five plus years now. Right. Tell us, you know, win or lose, what, what type of short-term, long-term goals do you have for yourself? You know, like at the end of 2023, where would we, where should we see Montana De La Rosa? Do you have goals like that? Um, I just, I just want to keep fighting, um, stay healthy. That's one of the hardest parts in the sport. Um, yeah, just stay healthy and keep fighting. <laughs> are, are, are you somebody that, that is, you know, you, you want to fight once every however many months, like, or, or is it like, if the right fight comes, I don't mind fighting on short notice. Are you like, nope, I'm only going to fight when I am ready, when I get a full camp and full understanding of my opponent. How, how do you typically take that? I feel like with girls, we don't get as many short notice calls just because there's usually only like one, maybe two girls on a fight card. So we don't really look for that as much. Um, I I've actually, I don't think I've ever gotten like a super short notice call. So I just kind of like keep training and like hope for, hope for anything they throw me. <laughs> Sometimes they well, get fight for a while. So I just got to kind of take what I get. In those situations, I know they have like the 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 fury grappling, and and we've seen fighters do a lot more of that. Is that is that something that you've you know looked at? Or are you interested in it? In in the essence of staying active, or I'm definitely interested in it. I feel like I'd have to put like a lot more time into like straight jujitsu because it's so much different going from MMA to straight jujitsu. Like some of the some of the people in my gym, like jujitsu is evolving so much. Like just going for the way they go for legs, just like it's. It's not MMA jiu-jitsu, like, it's weird. <laughs> like, it's something I would have to study because I don't want to look like an idiot going out there and just, like, I know jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu anymore just because it's evolved so much. 
Well, either way, you know, we're excited for you to be ready. Uh, we're excited for, for 225, and we'll get you out of here on this. We'll, we'll, we'll give you the opportunity. Do you have a prediction for us? Do you have a, you know, anything that, you know, when we wake up, you know, the day after, uh, what, what are we going to be reading as the headline of, of De La Rosa v. Suarez? Um, just more, just more, I'm so bad at talking crap. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do this. <laughs> but, but both fighters will have a good time. That's what we're most important. Yeah. But, uh, we're, we're excited. Uh, we are excited to, to watch it. We are excited to see you. Um, Obviously, you know, again, with all the craziness and this close to your fight, we appreciate a few minutes. We wish you continued success, continued health. Everyone out there, hit that like and subscribe button and make sure you keep an eye on Montana De La Rosa versus Tatiana Suarez on February 25th. Thank you, Montana. We appreciate your time. Thanks.